Hey guys, this is Spinda from Grinder School. What I'm going to do today, as I'm just getting going here, is going to do kind of a two or three part video here on Poker Stars. Uh, basically, to kind of go through reads, to go through uh, just about everything really in terms of what it takes when you start a session, kind of the middle part of the session, and coming to the end of it in terms of getting your reads. Um, getting an image, looking at your opponent's image, uh, then playing, and then maybe evaluating your play afterwards. So what we're going to try to do is maybe a uh, two, three, or even four-part series uh, where I play for a little bit, and then maybe review the session afterwards as well. I'm playing 25 no limit, 6 max here on Poker Stars. I've tried to pick tables with kind of variety of stack sizes here. Got a limper, an early position is a shorter stack. Sometimes I'm, you know, might raise, I might have three bet a uh, preflop raise. I'll complete here with queen nine suited though. I'll go ahead and flop top, top pair on the queen eight eight board. Uh, I'm gonna get two folds. So right off the bat, a pretty simple play there. Just waiting to get going on the other table. I'm trying to be pretty aggressive here, but again, against shorter stacks, I'm probably not gonna do a lot of isolating just because it gets us into bad spots. Full if a full stack was limping like this. Um, this is just a horrible play. This would be a play that seems like scared money to me. Maybe like an ace king kind of hand or a two tens. Uh, it's just horrible. Uh, we'll take a kind of keep an eye on that for the most part. Jack three, all, jack three suited. I'm not going to continue against a shorter stack, especially opening under the gun. Four three offsuit is going to be a pretty poor hand. Uh, so this player made it five bucks to go. Hmm. Six three also is going to be a fold. So when we're first getting going in a session, what do we need to do to kind of get reads? Well, we want to pay attention to our opponent's play. We want to take a look at how they play here. This player with the forty-eight dollar stack open to the cutoff. It checked back uh, the ace ten nine flop. And just calls a turn bet. I'm not as wor I'm more worried about him than I am the the shorter stack. So I'm gonna try to see how he plays, and hopefully this hand goes to showdown. This player goes all in. I'd love to see a showdown here, and he gives it up. He might have just had a big diamond. He checked the flop back with. Might have had a hand like two jacks, um, and it was peeling the turn. Once again, he raises it. Uh, since I'm going to 3-bet to 175, three and a half times it's a bet. He goes ahead and folds, so I'll kind of put likes to likes to open by min-raising. We'll fold to a 3-bet. Definitely fold a 3-deuce uh, suited there. So I have my HUD up and running, and about 10 hands will get going, and that'll also reiterate, or those will kind of uh, prove our reads a lot of the times, I guess. Uh, we're going to get try to get some reads normal way right now, right after the bats. He was playing a lot of hands, he was involved in a lot of pots, but also let the HUD tell us that as well. This player opens to five times on the button, certainly 8-4. Also, it's not a hand I want to defend with there. Okay, another ace king suited hand. I will be three betting any any opener, especially if the button opens. Okay, definitely be opening on this player's blinds with ace king suited. And he goes and lets it go. If he three bet me, there's a couple ways to continue. One is to four bet. Uh, one is also to flat call. Check raise a lot of flops all in. Any ace, I'll be opening on the button. I'm gonna try to get a pretty aggressive image here, so. As of right now, I think I might. Looks like the bigger stacks are playing pretty passive, so the table on the left, we might have to loosen up a little bit. Once again, if it folds to me, I will open up the a7 suited. Flatted by the small blind. Let's talk about his flat calling range and what that entails. It entails a lot of small pairs. Um, I'm going to check the king 10 top pair here. Uh, I'm definitely going to see that because his range includes a lot of a lot of um, small pairs that he'll have to give up on this flop. 
Uh, here the flesh card comes in and as as an over card, so it's tough. Uh, it's tough to do here. What I can do is I can bet, because I still want to give free cards away. I can bet and fold to a raise here. And he just calls. Interesting when he calls. There's hands like nine ten, queen ten, eight nine. That might pay off every bet. I'm gonna bet pretty small. I'm gonna bet half pot here. Uh, if I raise, I'll fold. If I get raised, I'll fold. Um, but uh, hopefully, he can come with like a worse ten here or something, and he gives it up anyway. So just putting pressure on our opponents is is really what I'm all about lately, and uh, kind of by betting three streets there, even with the hand as weak as ended up being second pair with a king kicker on a flush board. I put pressure on my opponent. And there's checking to induce a uh, bluff there, but I'd rather kind of control the size of the bet. Like if I bet half pot there, um, that's basically me saying I was willing to say I'm, I'm correct about 25% of the time, really. Because by the time, if I checked him and he had bet half pot, I would have been getting three to one on my call. If I checked him though and he just slams the pot button, well then uh, he has to be bluffing a lot more often for that play for me to call there. Uh, so. In all reality, I just uh, I like controlling the size of the bets there. I also think he'll call me with worse. I would never make that bet if I don't think he'll call me with worse. Player opens under the gun. I'm definitely going to three bet. Let's make it 425 to go. Three more to him. I will take a free look with 810 suited. And I don't flop much. Player goes all in, and it's easily a snap call. That's not the best flop for us there, unfortunately. Nope. Okay, the one hand we beat actually out of all of them. So even though we've been a little over act, a little active maybe, we just showed down a very nice hand. So this table has seen me um, showing down some good hands. And here I decided just to let it check down with my ten high. I really didn't feel like getting into too big of a pot there. So now we become four-handed. Uh, generally, I sometimes might leave these tables. We got two fuller stacks. We got a guy that'll open out of the gun and fold to a three bet. So maybe some passive players. The table to the left. I still like my table. I got uh, four other full stacks, which is what my game needs right now. I need to be playing against fuller stacks. Boom! Against that full equity. Uh, King Queen also it's a little too strong to let these guys limp. Let me go ahead and raise it up. This player could be limping any kind of garbage under the gun. Um, this player is completing all kinds of trash, and I don't think and he's obviously not completing a big hand. Okay. Um, talk about this flop in terms of c betting. If I c bet, I'm forced to call a shove, really, because by the time he shoves, I'll be getting a nice price of my money. Uh, I also know that checking to him gives him a license just to fire at it, and, I, and I'm sure he will if I check it to him. We'll just he'll just fire with anything. I mean, I'd, I'd be unbelievably surprised if he checked back the flop here. But uh, I am. I'm just going to give up here and check back. And there's check raising all in. Like if I had ace high, I might check raise all in here. But. uh not exactly sure what I want to do right now with it. It's just the trouble with playing out of position against short stacks. We're just playing with short stacks in general. Like if I see bet 225 like I wanted to, and he shoves, it's 350 or so, 360 or oh, I was disconnected. It's like 350 or 60 or more so for me to call. Uh, I end up getting like over three to one on my money, which I, that's all I need to hit a king or a queen. So I commit myself with a with a hand that's never probably never good there. I flop bottom pair and a gutter ball here in a limp pot. Let me go ahead and make it 35 cents to go. Looks like we may not even be able to find out because it looks like he's disconnected. How long do they give him in disconnection? 30 seconds. Uh, this player check calls the flop bet. I'm just going to let the turn check through, peel my gutter ball, and see if we can't uh, hit it. We missed. I don't think I'm ever good here. He almost insta fires near pot. Checks it back. That's obviously a good card to bet. I bet this is a bluff anyway. Oh, he's back now. 
the other one I fold just because I just don't see anything I beat there in the river except for a bust of flush draw. And I don't, I'm not sure exactly how much he's going to bet a bust of flush draw. Here I'm forced to call and brave a spade. And my hand should be good, really. I might have gotten lucky. I might have been very lucky that, uh, in all reality, that he had ace five with the ace of spades, I believe. Here, um, with a good image, it's a spot where you can squeeze. Uh, for now, I'm just let the hand go. Um, don't limp behind the shorter stack. That's what's quiet. I just don't like short stacks. I just can't play aggressively. I'll definitely see a flop of 7-9 suited against a full stack, though. That's obviously as good as I could ask for. I'll make it 425 to go here. Put some pressure on him. I hope he doesn't have kings full. He doesn't when he bets that much. Uh, I'm going to make it 9 to go. He's like ace king with the ace of spades or something. And he goes ahead and folds. I have to build a big pot and protect my hand. I'll limp behind uh, with seven six suit on the table on the left. So I flop nice. I raise just because that's what I would do with a lot of hands there on that kind of flop. Um, on the turn, you can kind of pull up the hand issue for you to see. I could fire the ace I flop single. Two people checked it. That's actually what I'm going to do. Oh, wow. I didn't notice it was four handed. Because I, I had the hand up, I totally missed that. So this is. Uh, when both these guys check, though, I just it's hard to put them on an ace. Uh, he calls, so. Um, I'm wondering if betting the turn is good or betting the river is good. Oh, okay, now I can just fold. Now the flush came in. I was thinking about betting a non-club river. I can just let the hand go. Over here, uh, this flush hand. Ace 10. Uh, I'm going to let this ace 10 go. I've been pretty active on this table. You know, on the flop, the pot is like 250. I raise him up. On the turn, the pot is like $10, and he bets 150. So I almost, my raise might have been almost a little too small, but I have to build the pot. I'm looking just to shove the river. I think my read was probably pretty good. Oops, sorry about timing out. I completed the Quinton also just because you limp on the button. Uh, I felt like my read was pretty good there. Um, in terms of what he had, he might have just had a naked king there, even uh, without a, without a spade. I think if I raise that flop here, it's a little loose. Uh, but I'm going to open the 9-7 suited. I'm trying to sustain a pretty aggressive image. And they, they all fold. Uh, under the gun open or five handed. If I didn't like 9 7 suited again, I might three bet. Uh, let that hand go for the most part. It's tough when you have these short stacks. And like, this is why playing with short stacks just is not fun. The button limps all limp behind. But otherwise, okay, I'll just let the 8 9 offsuit go. It's just not fun playing with short stacks. I mean, it really isn't. I mean, normally I think I'd get up and go, but what we're trying to do is get some reads and kind of sit and settle into our session here. I'm trying to. Oh, so my HUD's picking up the tables or not? It is. I should have plenty of hands. It's king suited. Definitely an open in any position. If I get three bet, uh, by this player I probably won't four bet. But if that player does, I'm obviously getting it all in. We're now pretty deep with this player, but to me it's nice that I have position on him. Plus he seems relatively passive, which is always good. Wonder what's going on. It's picked up the tables, but it hasn't put the hand histories in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this for a second, guys. We're gonna get right back to it as soon as I uh, get this poker tracker figured out. Okay, guys, we're back. Sorry about that, uh, but I do have my HUD up and running now, which is great. I just had to fix a few things. Uh, I completed a seven suited after an under the gun limper. Just getting a nice price to complete there. Uh, 
you know, even to a 25 cent bet, being out of position, it's just not going to be profitable to, uh, to continue there. Uh, nothing really crazy happened during the uh, few minutes I was gone. I isolated this other player at the large stack with like Queen Jack offshoot on the button when he limped uh, in middle position. Over here, nothing's happened at all. You know, to be able to open a hand like 7 10 suited, there have to be some good table conditions. We see here that uh, we have some tight players. I like to look at the players in the blinds when we do it. Um, getting three bets small is never fun. But I'm going. Uh, that's a 7-7, seven, seven. so if I flop something big here, I know I'm getting a stack. I just know he has a big hand. Uh, whew. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lead small. If he raises, I'm going to shove. So I'm pretty sure he'll raise here. He might have an like ace king too. Ugh. He just goes all in. Uh I know he has a big hand like aces or kings, so let's look at our math here. We're about two to one to hit the money. And we're only getting three to two on our money. Thirty to God, I can't believe he just shoved. Oh man. I was hoping he would make it like nine and I could shove and maybe get him to fold. We weren't exactly deep enough for that. I mean, my 7 or 10 are never good. It's painfully obvious he has uh, aces or king. Probably aces here, I guess. Um, I think he's ever bl if he's ever bluffing, God, 3 to 2 is not the right price. I need more than 40%. Uh, I need to be getting a better price on my money. Um, it's just unfortunate there. If I bet more on the flop, I'm if I bet like four on the flop I actually have to call uh, wow here's player min raises in the small blind I'm definitely not full into a min raise I flop second pair I'll be content to get this in with him it's a great card nothing we can do just put him in here uh, probably need a heart uh, Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, he had two jacks there, and just ran into a bit of a cooler there, really. Uh, that turn kind of, kind of suckered me in. I guess I could have checked back the turn, but uh, man, he hits and runs like a good boy. It's quite all right. Uh, put notes on this guy. Well, three bet. Three times in position. Here it's an okay flop to C bet and make it 250. And this player in fold to a shove. Well, three bet in three times in position and push over small flop bet on 99x flop. So we take down that one nicely there. You know, throughout a session, good things are going to happen and bad things too. So like at the first part of the session, we had all the momentum. It seemed like. Uh, Smaller raise, I'd probably flat with five, six suited. But for now, since he's only a half stack, I'm gonna let it go and just get me into marginal spots. Like I got two over here. Um, you know, sometimes things go well, sometimes they go poorly. So throughout a session, you have to keep a level head and really just kind of keep plotting away. It's why it's called grinding. I mean, that's why it's a. It can be a grind at times. You just really have to continue to try to play good poker. Here, uh, that seven ten suited hand is. Uh, questionable on a lot of accounts. Check raising all in is a possible play, but he never folds a big pair there. Um, so like if the flop comes 10, 10, X, like when I had 10, 7, I would probably check raising all in. Um, I mean, it's just painfully obvious to me that he, you know, he has a big pair. I was hoping, since he seems like a very tight player, um, that I could bet three bet all in. But the stacks were a little shallow there to do that in retrospect. I tried. That's why I tried to bet small so I could have him manipulate. So I could manipulate his race size. So then I could either. Well, I mean, I mean, check calling is fine on that flop, I guess. Um, but eh, it's not fine. It depends on his size of his bet. We'd even let him get to that point really. So now we have our hut up. We can kind of look at how everyone's playing. Uh, this $46 stack is playing solid pre-flop wise at uh, 23.14. 
Um, this player named Luckbox is playing a little looser, and uh, the short stack's playing pretty tight passive. The table on the left, there's a full stack playing 43-7, which is nice. Um, the player on my right is running 21-7, so it may not be the best seat in the world right there. Uh, with the station or the loose passive player two to my left. Obviously, the player on my left is very, very tight, which is the player we'll exploit by just trying to set mine against him, really. Open ace king offsuit, just very standard on the table on the right. We have four six suited in the blinds. Uh, hopefully, get to see a cheap flop of this hand because it does tend to flop well multi way. Uh, here, it flops a gutter ball into three players. Uh, there are arguments for maybe leading. Now, I'm just going to let it go though. The pot's small. My hand can improve and still be the still be a second best hand too. Definitely gonna raise up the aces. Dollar twenty five with the butt limper. Calls and we see a queen high flop. It's a pretty good flop. Go ahead and see bet. Being deep it stinks a little bit. I'm gonna exercise a little bit of pot control and see bet a little smaller than I normally do. He just gives up unfortunately. Um I was gonna go for three streets of value, but do it in uh small fashion there. on the button, just any two really. I know this player is a bit pat, a bit loose in the blinds. Um, if we three bet, we just fold, you know. King eight suited with a poster will be a will definitely be an open. It's tough to like isolate lightly with two short stacks, but you can tell this table is playing pretty tight. So you can see how I'm exploiting. I'm just opening up a good amount of hands there. I picked up 60 cents easily there without even really trying. I'll definitely see a free flop with Jack Deuce off soon. I flop bottom pair in a limp pot. This player leads out uh, two thirds of the pot. I'm just going to let it go. It's such a dry board. I just don't see any hands he's he's betting here that uh, I want to continue against. Like the worst possible hand he's betting there is like a is a six. If you check raises all in, so yeah, I mean, he might have just been leading air, but he also might have been leading a six. And that board, yeah, after getting called, he's just content to check fold to this player. Uh, here, I'm just gonna let the queen do suit to go. I don't like to get shoved on uh, by uh, the short stack there. Table on the right, not much is going on. We still want almost. We still want to try to pay attention, though. To everyone's playing. Yeah, I'm just gonna limp behind with the queen ten suited, king ten suited to two players. Uh, just don't feel like isolating. You're building a huge pot. Uh, this player small three bets in position. I'm gonna go ahead and call and see a flop. <laughs> He insta just shoves all in. Obviously, I can't call, but I mean, I wouldn't you just love to flop the set here? Because it's pretty obvious he has a big pair. He's just scared of everything. Uh, you know, good game him though. I mean, uh, will three bet small and insta shove ace five th three two tone flop. I mean, who knows what he could have had there? I would have loved to just like flat it with aces and uh, been able to snap that one off. Oh, I isolate with 17 suited. Get flatted by a loose player in a small blind, which is fine. Like, if I'm going to get flat, I, don't mind. I, I like being positioned. Obviously, it's just a heck of a flop here. He bets four. I'm just going to shove. You know. Oh, and we have the nuts. Wow. Um, great play there, buddy. I, I appreciate the money. Four threes of hearts. Did I see that right? I probably shouldn't even open Queen Jack suited after uh, it being seen that I'm willing to do that with like 10 7 suited. But, you know. He bets 4 and calls himself. I was thinking flush draw uh, when it happened. Then I was maybe. Uh, 4 3 of hearts. Bottom? Wow. I mean, that just. It just goes to show you how these games should be beatable if like your tables like properly. I mean, now like right now this table to me looks like it's it's pretty much gone down the down the tube. What I'm gonna do is uh, 
both these tables, this table on the right is filling up with another stack. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video in the next five minutes or so. I'm going to bring up a different table from the left because if you look at it, right now on my right there's a 21-7. To, three to my right there's a 28-10. On my left there's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, I don't have stats yet on the short stack and a full stack just bought in. But, I mean, just from looking at it, it's uh, fairly obvious that this is not a good table to continue on. I mean, if I pull up Poker Stars right now, um, we would be able to see 30, 40, 25 and limit 6 max tables. I mean, this is like Monday afternoon, but we'd be able to see that many tables. Which, to me, means that, I mean, it just would be foolish to be sitting on a table this bad. I'm just going to bet 3 bet all in on this flop. I'll just get the money in. If he leads, I'll just get the money in. Okay. Well, it's hard to get the money in now, but I'm just going to act like he didn't even uh, bet there. I'm just going to raise it up. I meant to bet 250, but 260 is the same thing. If he shoves, we'll just call. We have so much equity. Um, and he just folds anyway. 9-7 uh, suit is a little loose under the gun, especially with two short stacks on my left. So, you know, analyzing your table and, uh, and noticing how it plays is a big part of becoming a winning player. I was talking to KM from the site uh, the other week about table selection. We were doing his, go his coaching session, and uh, to me it was hilarious. I mean, it was just, he was sitting on some bad tables, and I don't even think you realized it. And at this level, you, don't, you shouldn't have to put yourself through that. You should easily be able to find good tables. So what I look at mine right now, uh, this table is running 19.8, and this table is running 24.11. That's way too tight. Wait, I could find tables running 35, 8, and, and 44, you know, on this site. And that's what I want to do. And I also want to find some tables with some larger stacks. So what we're going to do is this will be my last orbit. Um, after these blinds go through at these tables, I'm going to go find some more tables. And we'll have to readjust our reads, but that's how sessions go. Okay, I wish, I mean, I, I might stay on the table on the right, because I think I have some reads on a couple of these players. But I just don't like the shorties being on my left. But that's okay, actually, really. And, because I don't mind having position on the three full stacks. But this table, I mean, we could sit around and talk about how to be aggressive all day long, and I guess I can go into that. So we'll try to figure out if I want to stay at these or not in the next few minutes. But for the most part, I hope you guys realize that these are not great tables to play at if you're just trying to play your normal tight or even too tight strategy, really, where you're going to exploit someone's player's looseness. Um, these aren't the tables to do it at. Here we have interesting boards. Here, these are these are great boards if you have a six, obviously. Yeah, so I mean, kind of a cooler there in a sense. Set versus uh, the second, really the almost the practical nuts there when you have the ace. But if you, those are great boards if you have the nuts just to put a lot of money in on and maximize the times when your opponent has an ace there. Just gotta love overbet shoving like the nut hands. On, on those kind of boards, like on a five, six, seven, eight board, say you have nine, ten, right? So you have the ultimate nuts, and someone else just has a naked nine. Well, they're gonna, you should be able to stack them all the time, all the time, really. I mean, to the point where if you could shove five hundred big blinds into the pot, you know, and they'd probably have to call, just because they're that they don't think on that level. Over here we had a pretty decent sized pot go on. Uh, sorry, I missed the action. Let's check out the hand history. This player raises and there's a flatter. The player just got very aggressive and just won the last pot. I'm going to go ahead and 3-bet. Kind of squeeze here with ace-jack. He flats. If he has big cards, this is a good flop to see bet. Here. I'm going to call this guy's bet. 7 8 suited. It's loose. I know he'll stack off. Player min raises. Uh, over here. This is a tough flop to continue if he doesn't have, an, uh, doesn't have a king in his hand. And he goes and folds. Uh, getting min race stinks. I made a play. I see bad. It didn't exactly work out for me. 
uh, I don't know if I want to compound the error by calling him calling there. So, I mean, it's not really an error, but it's not a bad flop to see about if like he has ace queen or ace king and he's flatting with that preflop. There's a great spot now because I just did something stupid and I picked up a big hand. So this time I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> They've seen me now three bet and fold. So, you know, frankly, I'm not even scared to get it all in with two jacks here. My image is probably horrible. Done a couple silly things probably on this table, so you gotta take advantage of that and you know, take advantage of your image. And they fold anyway. You know, so three bot three bet pots happen. Uh I wish this getting set out. Uh wish I had a little more time to think about that too. Like the min ray is always is silly. I'm like, why does he just why is he I mean I don't I hate to like get it all in there and you have ace queen and I just go oh, you gotta be kidding me that's the exact hand I was trying to fold out um, I also don't understand why he leaves himself two dollars behind to me that just doesn't make any sense I'm gonna call the jag 10 off so I'm just kinda loosening my game up a little bit uh, I'm gonna probably check raise this flop here yeah definitely 450 to go Uh, once again, I'm getting a weird price. God, my image is horrible. Yeah, I'm just gotta let this one go again. Just not getting the right price to continue. Um, and there's times I can just check call that flop, but or I can bet three bet all in on that flop. Uh, so maybe we'll stay at this table now that my image has probably just gone to gone to hell here real quick, but that's okay. I Man, I'm making plays, trying to get aggressive, and God, these guys, these guys are just killing me. When you want a four dollar pot off me, and you sit out. I don't, I don't get it. Wow, congratulations! You want a four dollar pot? Go tell your mom. I mean, get out of here. Just leave. All right. I mean, so this is table is horrible now. I mean, got uh, you can get stats on the chief here real quick, but in all actuality, we're just uh, yeah, you know, just kind of running bad, running into hands. Maybe it looks like here. So, all in all, that's all right. That happens. I mean, a lot of these. It's great to show you these plays that work all the time, but they don't always work all the time. But that's why the it's more of a math game than you think. It's a percentage of the time they have to work. This guy posted on the. So if he raises, I'll be. Three betting and getting it all in with them, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, let's make it four, eh, four fifty, four sixty to go is fine. If he just wants to get it in for his first hand at the table, I have no problem doing it with two nines. I'm basically committing myself here, though. That's fine. Just put it on this flop if he flopped a king or something, you know. Congratulations, but a lot of the times he just kind of has to give up there. Wow, well, a move with aggression that worked. Fortunately, it was against a short stack. But uh, you know, it's poker is a math game, so in all in all reality, we have to be, you know, we have to make mathematically correct plays. Like in that three bet pot, the squeeze. Well, I squeezed a lot because that player seemed like he was opening a lot of pots. This player that calls him doesn't have to have much. So when I squeeze there to four dollars, there's like two fifty in dead money already out there. That's a nice spot. To pick up a lot of dead money. If they call, I still have a strong hand. And one player calls. This is a good flop to bet fold. 125. He calls. Interesting. He called without even thinking, which makes me think he just has a bad ace or something. Yeah, I'll just fold. Then he bets without thinking. No, yeah. we'll just let the hand go here. Really unfortunate in a blind war. I mean, there's times I want to call here once. See if he wants to check down the river. I think I am gonna do that. I think I'm gonna call once. He just bets so fast without like that, without even thinking. Um, I'm gonna do a little, the old little pause and check here. If he puts a sizable bet in, then yeah, we'll just give it up. I don't think this player is capable of. Uh, Betting multiple streets, and he was. Gosh darn it! He floated me, and he bet. The, I was right on the turn. Shows king four of hearts. I think I need to get my PT. 
Uh, yep, I didn't uh, hadn't been forcing all the hands in there. King four of hearts. Will float ace x x flops and blind wars. Blind wars with king high and fire turn river. Wow, good play. I just I just don't put him on the ability to be able to fire the turn in the river there. Here I've been like getting blown off a lot of pots. I'm gonna see a free card with the queen nine. That's a good card to bet. Like I, I have ace king and check back or something. He folds. I'm gonna see bet. Uh, seven six six flop. And the guy just gives it up. Uh, the paired boards are good ones to see bet, just because it's unlikely that uh, they have anything on those kind of boards. So we went from running good to running bad to running in between during the session so far. Uh, but for the most part, I feel like I'm playing. Okay, I made a couple moves that didn't work, and that stuff's going to happen, but you just kind of have to fight through that. But being up, you know, around a buy in is nice, even though my, some of my plays haven't worked. So that's always nice, really. I mean, I might, you, you could have accused me of spewing off over, uh, you know, maybe a buy in <laughs> worth of bluffs and stuff already. Uh, but, you know, still being up a buy in is nice. And I think you really have to take your image into consideration now. Like, I should be getting paid off pretty easily if I. Like, on this table on the left, I think it's unfortunate that I haven't picked up a world class kind of hand yet, you know, flopping a set or or just an overpair. You're all flat with the deuces on the button. I haven't been flatting a lot, but obviously 2-2 two, two is a hand I think I want to flat with. I just hope this short stack doesn't reship here. I'll let us see a free flop here. Uh, and I totally break that flop. I'm going to go and bet 35 cents here. This player bets 175. Um... Check call, checks instantly. I'm going to check this back, and it's actually a pretty good card. I don't think there's any value in betting. I just think I'll see a naked three a lot, maybe a bad four like mine. Okay, so there might have been value against that hand after I checked the turn, but overall, uh, not much. They gave up pretty quick with the deuces on that flop. I just, with my image, uh, bluffing seems to be pretty bad, uh, so I decided just to give it up. Okay. Just play for a few more minutes. Uh, and then I'll start up a second part of something. I'll stick these tables out just because I have some reads and I have a pretty bad image now, which is great because I kind of thrive off that a lot of the time. There's a pretty big pot that just got played. So this guy that I thought was tight, see if I'd seen those. My, I didn't have my HUD running. Uh, he's not tight at all. He's pretty aggressive, so I really wish I'd seen that because I would have called that river bet with two eights on that jack high board. I mean, on the A-side board, excuse me. This player is just very, very tight. And we, um, on, my, on my left, on Giggle Mesh, on the table on the left, which is great. You just love having the... If you get out to play a table with a knit on it, it's just great that he's on your left because he's never meant to make moves on me. And, uh, you know, for the most part, it pretty much means he's just going to play his hands face up and I can, even being out of position, probably own him a lot. It folds to me all open. I'm not even going to complete with a7 offsuit with my image. It's just going to give me some bad spots, especially against a shorty. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this, come right back, uh, and keep on trucking.